Okay, so in this video, we want to cover the baseline structure for Microsoft Teams for small organizations. When I say small, I'm think, thinking of organizations with one to 50 employees. And the issue that we ran into when initially when we first cracked open Teams and tried to organize our organization within Teams, we had so many containers and it, the sprawl was more Teams than it were employees information that was over the place over a period of time it felt like the same information could fit into three or four different containers and everyone was just not on the same page when it came to retrieving and storing information creating a mess in microsoft teams what we came up with and this is actually a response to a new security feature that was released in teams probably about a year year and a half ago that allows us the right flexibility to start very condensed, very compact. That should be your baseline when it comes to your team and channel structure, but with an opportunity or with a strategy to scale out as you get more clients, as you get more employees, as you get more business in general. So what we're gonna walk in, in this video is a baseline structure on how you can organize. Now it's a different conversation of how do you get to the ideal state, which I'm going to show you, and where you are now, because there's going to be some condensing, some consolidation, and there's going to be some friction point. And, you know, obviously you don't want to impede productivity, but sometimes you have to rip the Band-Aid in order to grow at the pace you want to grow. So let's get started. So here is some Microsoft team. The first thing you want to do, you will notice that I do not have a create team option at the bottom. That's the first thing you want to do. You want to kill that. You don't want different people in the organization creating these teams. You want dedicated admins and some type of vetting process that says, do you really need this team and how are you going to use it? And why can't you use what we already have in place? So that's number one. So the other one is that once we have that, all of our team creation goes through our admin. So I'm going to pause this video, create the three teams we need, and then come back and explain to you how we use those three. Okay, so now we have our three teams. And those three teams are back office, and that's gonna be for all your various departments within your organization. This is gonna be the core foundation, one single team to represent all the departments in your organization. And we'll talk about the security concerns and issues that we had previously, but those have been rectified with the new feature at channel level security. We're gonna get into that. The second one is clients. This is your pretty much your representation of all the clients that you work with. Now, if you work with hundreds of clients, we probably want to condense this to a certain set or maybe come up with a differentiator to put those hundreds in different buckets. But if you're, you know, and that's why I think this this works best for one through 50, because, you know, usually you're dealing with a handful of clients, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 clients max. And this structure will support that because at any given time, you're not working with all 50 clients. You have your top active ones, right? So, you know, we talk about archiving and things along those lines. And then the last one is projects. And projects is going to be what you're building for your client, like the reason why the client hired you to produce that product or to produce that service. And this is where you track all that information inside the projects, right? So, Let's go ahead and blow these out to the various channels that are needed. So let's just look in our back office. We're going to create channels for human resources. And again, when it comes to privacy, um, instead of using the standard channel, which private and standard were on the only previous options we had, this new shared channel option is the game changer. This is the one that allow you to create a channel give access to users and members who are not part of, who are not members of the parent team, which was a, a very big sticking point. And that way they can allow, and that's the only reason why this structure works, right? So here we're gonna do a shared channel for human resources, and then we're gonna add in the key human resource individual. So in this scenario, it's gonna be Madison, right? So once we create them, we're gonna go ahead and make those, uh, make them owners of this channel. And that way they can control, you know, membership of the channel and so on and so forth. They have unrestricted access to the channel because they're department heads, if you will. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create the other ones. So the, the process is the same for the other ones. And um, I'll pause this video. Then we'll come back in to discuss it. 
Okay, so here is an example of back office with the various channels. Again, these channels are going to represent your key departments within your organization. And as you can see, if I click on digital uh, and click on files, you will notice that we have a folder structure set up just for digital to work in. You can standardize these so where you say every department will have the structure. So if I go into human resources, click on files, and then it will have a very similar folder structure. Now, it also gives you that flexibility to where if you click on executive executives and click on files, you will notice that this is empty, allowing them to create the structure that makes sense for the executives. So each one of these channels will have their own security structure, their own membership, and now everything is condensed and consolidated under one team within Microsoft Teams uh, very distinct, distinguished from the other two teams within the organization. If you're dealing with your department, you're here. If you're working on, uh, if you're looking at information for a client, the relationship with a client, you're going here. If you're doing project work for a particular client, you're going here. We only give you three options and it's very clear of where you should be depending on the document that you're working with or where you should start looking depending on the document that you're searching for. So to get the big picture, let's go ahead and blow out clients and projects. So let me pause the video and then get back once I have some sample data for us to review. Okay, so now we're back. So with the clients built out, you will notice that, you know, we're just dealing with two main clients right now, and this is going to be Pepsi and Starbucks. And you can see here uh, for Starbucks, we have two projects that are ongoing. There's AI meetings for Starbucks, which is a project initiative. And then there's the social media management for Starbucks, which is a project initiative. And this is where you can organize your clientele. And if you do a deep dive into one of these, if you look at Pepsi, for example, this is an example of a folder structure. And you will see that, you know, when dealing with clients, sometimes it's important to make sure that we're on brand when working with them, especially in the public facing or social media way, representing them. So we have all their branding artifacts in this folder any contract or agreement that we sign this will hold both the master agreement as well as the statement of work for individual projects and then in the intake so any additional information that they want to provide that will be there and then of course the most important of them all invoices so this is going to be where we store the invoices and then we would track which ones are paid which ones are pending now if you go to starbucks uh, it gives you that same feeling right so you have that same structure and, and again, you can standardize all around these structures. Uh, if you reach out, and if you need help with any of this, you know, this is something that we've done for many clients and we can definitely help you out as well and to get you organized and get you set up. And with that, you know, we have scripts in place to where when you're creating a client channel, for an example, we can make sure that this is the default structure. When you're creating a project for a particular client, we can make sure that one, your naming convention is, is hold true. And then for each project, for example, if you have a standard folder structure that each project must adhere to, we can ensure that that's scripted and you're, you know, is predictable and it's exact and as you expect, you know, very consistent going away. That's the word I was looking for. Very consistent for all your members in the organization, taking all of the guesswork. And if something missing, someone's going to be raising their hand to say, why doesn't this have X? Because we use it the same way over here. So, and again, this is something that you can grow into. There's a couple of things that, that I'm not going to make this video extremely long, but there's a couple of things that you also should consider. One, what is your archiving process? So when you're done with this project, how do you archive it? What is the process of archiving? And where do those documents need to be stored? So archiving is one, it works. Uh, there's two main goals for archiving. One, take it out of the view and access from the general organization. And to make sure the documents are searchable for those who need to have access to it, because sometimes we need to go into the archive to look at a contract or to look at a project or to look at a past broad budget to kind of get a sense of when we're doing a proposal for something new that's similar, we can leverage a lot of that work that's already been done. So archive, your archiving process is key for that. Archiving also helps keep this clean, right? So if I'm um, switching over to Keelan for an example, 
in looking at his persona, he should only be seeing the things that one, he has access to, and two, are active uh, projects or even active clients. Because sometimes clients go dormant because you finish a project, there's nothing else that's coming out of that relationship as of yet. And, you know, they just part, they're not part of the current cycle. So having active clients, uh, very accessible, easy, you know, according, you know, I'm sorry, um, easy at the fingertips and then also having the active projects easy and uh, at the finger in the, at the fingertips. Sorry, again, tongue twisted here at the fingertips and keep making sure that people only have access to what they should be seeing and the only things that are active that they really need to be concerned with. And that will keep this Microsoft team structure organized, crisp and ready for productivity. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. If you need to get in contact with us, I'm going to link in the, it's in the description on how to get in contact with us to schedule a free consultation meeting. You'll see what your need help with and how can we help. Until then, I'll see you tomorrow.